Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to today's screencast about the geography of what we call Mesoamerica. Uh, today's essential question is, what was the land of the Aztecs, Mayas, and Incas like? Uh, the Aztecs, Mayas, and Incas are the three most important civilizations of what we refer to as Mesoamerica, which is basically all of the areas south of the United States where indigenous peoples were once um, the only population group to live there before the Europeans arrived. There are three regions of Mesoamerica, which we also call Latin America. One of those regions is da, 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 Central America, which is basically Mexico and all of the countries south of Mexico extending to Panama. There's also the Caribbean, which is an island chain extending from the coast of Florida all the way down to the northern coast of South America near Venezuela. And there is also the continent of South America. Those are the three regions of Mesoamerica, which is also known as Latin America. Uh, in addition to referring to this area as Latin America, we also refer to it as the tropics because the areas we're studying, most of them lie between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. Uh, the Tropic of Cancer is 23 and a half degrees north latitude and the Tropic of Capricorn is 23 and a half degrees south latitude. Uh, and hopefully you still remember that the equator is zero degrees latitude. Uh, if you are living in these areas, the sun is almost directly overhead every day of the year. Uh, the temperatures are extremely warm. There's a lot of moisture and it very rarely gets below freezing. So these are areas that we call the tropics. Uh, the first area we're going to look at is the Aztec area, which is in central Mexico. Um, the Aztec Empire existed in valleys that were surrounded by the Sierra Madre mountain ranges. And there are three mountain ranges in Mexico called the Sierra Madres. We're going to take a look at those right now as we go into Mexico. And we're going to switch to the satellite view. The Sierra Madre mountains would be over here, over here, and down here. Most people of Mexico live in this area uh, and the Aztec area was this area so there are three Sierra Madre mountain ranges in Mexico the Sierra Madre Occidental mountains are on the western side of Mexico the Sierra Madre Oriental Mountains are on the eastern side of Mexico, and the Sierra Madre del Sur Mountains are on the southern end of Mexico. And again, most people in Mexico live in the valley created in the middle of those three mountain ranges. This is what it looks like in the Sierra Madre Mountains. Uh, very dry, shrubby, not a lot of trees. Um, we would call it arid. So this is further north. This is north of the tropics. Very difficult to travel because not a lot of flat areas that make travel easy. And then when you get further south in the Sierra Madre del Sur, it's a little bit greener because you're closer to the tropics, but it's still extremely rugged and hard to travel from place to place. And in the Mexican state of Oaxaca, this is what the Sierra Madre Mountains look like. Notice the Catedral in the middle of the city. And these would be the Sierra Madre Mountains off in the distance. Our next topic is the Maya. And if we're looking at the Maya, we're talking much further south talking the Mexican states of Chiapas, Tabasco, Campeche, Yucatan, Quintana Roo, and the countries of Belize, 
Fun fact, Belize is an English-speaking country. Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador. This is the area that was once dominated by the Maya. And on this map, you can see the Aztecs were up here in the green areas. The Maya were to the south and east on the Yucatan Peninsula. And I just mentioned all of these countries to you. So you should have that in your notes. Here is the Yucatan Peninsula right here. Um, notice this is the Gulf of Mexico. Here's the Yucatan Peninsula. Remember, a peninsula is a piece of land surrounded on three sides by water. So the only way to get into the Gulf of Mexico is in the gap between Cuba and the Yucatan Peninsula or the gap between Florida and Cuba as well. This is what it looks like in the Yucatan Peninsula. And since I'm sitting here at the end of November and it's extremely cold outside here in Oregon, I'm looking at that saying, that looks pretty good to me. Uh, and if you look on the map, you can see it's extremely lush and green in that area. And that these areas here with the light blue are very shallow azure waters, um, which is what makes these extraordinarily attractive areas for tourists uh, and why Mexico's economy is very tourist driven because these beach areas are some of the nicest on the entire planet. Our final area is the Inca area and I'll show that to you on an internet map in just a moment. Uh, the Inca area is the western coast and the Andes Mountains of South America. So the countries that we know of today would include Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, Bolivia, Chile, and Argentina. The Andes Mountains are about right here, if you're looking at the arrow. And if we were to go onto the internet and use Google, we are talking about this area right down here. Starting from about up here all the way down here. So you'll notice how the national borders um, don't necessarily correspond well. Um, this right here would be the crest of the Andes Mountains, the tallest point in the Andes Mountains. And if you were to go to a political map showing you where the boundaries of the countries are, um, this is what it would look like. Moving on to the next slide. Uh, the Andes Mountains are pretty incredible. They are the world's longest exposed mountain chain. So from the northern tip to the southern tip, they're 4,000 miles long. And at their widest point in Bolivia, they're about 300 miles wide. Their average height is 13,000 feet. 13,000 feet. The tallest mountains in the lower 48 states of America are Mount Rainier and Mount Whitney, and they're about 14,500 feet. So these mountains are incredibly tall. The highest mountain is Aconcagua at over 22,000 feet above sea level, um, which is, if a mile is 5,280 feet, why don't you do a mathematical calculation and figure out how many miles tall that mountain is. Uh, here's Aconcagua here. It's on the border between Argentina and Chile. Uh, and it's pixelated because I made it look bigger. So um, the picture was originally smaller. I couldn't find a more detailed one. Uh, and this is what the Andes Mountains look like. Extremely picturesque and beautiful. Looks like a motivational poster there, but it's actually a picture of the Andes Mountains. Uh, and fun fact, horses did not exist in the Americas before Christopher Columbus. So that picture uh, in indigenous times would not have existed. Uh, the Andes Mountains are named after the Spanish word for staircase, los andines. Uh, the Spanish actually gave the Andes their name. They're not just mints. I like Andes mints myself. And some parts of the Andes are extremely dry, except down in the valleys where you can see maybe they could grow some food down there. 
but the rest of the mountains are extremely rugged. And yet more pictures of the Andes Mountains. Very, very tall, very, very snowy. Although, as with most other mountain ranges in the world, uh, glaciers in the Andes Mountains are receding as a result of global climate change. Uh, and that is verifiable based on taking pictures and ice data from the mountain year after year after year, less and less ice. And I believe this is Lima, Peru, which is in the shadow of the Andes Mountains. In fact, my understanding is if you fly into Lima's airport, it's quite a sight to behold. Final geographic feature we're going to discuss is Lake Titicaca, which is a very, very high lake. Uh, it's extremely large. It's located on the border of Peru and Bolivia. It is 12,500 feet above sea level. So it's literally more than two miles above sea level. And it's very, very large. In fact, it's the largest lake in South America by volume, meaning that it has more water than any other lake on the South American continent. Uh, and it is fed by five large rivers and 20 smaller streams. So it is fed by more than one source. Much of Incan religion comes from legends surrounding Lake Titicaca. And I know it's a funny name. It is not an English word. It is actually a word that comes from the indigenous language of the Inca people. Okay. Here is a picture of Lake Titicaca and what it looks like. And now it is time for you to discuss with your elbow table partner uh, what your notes are like, see who has the best notes, if there are any gaps in your notes, compare and contrast your notes and help each other take as many detailed notes as possible, help each other fill in the gaps, and then we're going to have you ask questions about your notes. And the challenge with those questions is going to be can you use higher level questions? What we want you to do is use level two and level three questions about these notes. And you might ask yourself, what a level two and level three questions look like? Well, if you are defining, describing, identifying, listing, naming, observing, or reciting, you are only operating at level one. Level one questions are the easiest uh, and they require the least amount of processing. Um, whereas if you are analyzing, comparing, contrasting, grouping, inferring, sequencing, or synthesizing, you're taking it up a notch. You're taking the information and you're doing something with it. Um, if you are applying, evaluating, hypothesizing, imagining, judging, predicting, or speculating, you have reached the apex. You have reached the height of Costa's levels of questions. That's what we want you to try to do. And finally, we want you to write a Cornell note summary at the bottom of your notes with sentence frames. And for your convenience and enjoyment, I am providing you with these sentence frames. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this concludes today's lesson on the geography of Mesoamerica, Latin America, the Aztec area, the Maya area, and the Inca area. This is Mr. Blumenthal signing off. Until next time, do enjoy.